Hey internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and I've got a friend online. He's from, uh, originally from Minneapolis I believe and now he's down in Florida. Are you there David? Yes sir, I'm here. Oh, you walked inside. You were outside in the nice weather and now, you're, now you can take off your coolies. Yeah, it was getting a little <laughs> warm out there for me. I had to come inside where it was. Okay. Quit, quit sweating quite so much. So you are down in Florida right now, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in here in uh, St. Petersburg at the moment, actually. Okay, and you used to live in Minneapolis? Yes, sir. That's pretty cool. I like this internet stuff. It's kind of fancy. And you're in the real estate industry. Yes. Okay, I got, all, I got all my facts correct then. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so when I connected with you, you were out in your backyard, I think. You were pacing off some stuff because I heard you counting numbers or were you taking a nap counting sheep? What were you doing? I was getting uh, getting some measurements for my fence guys to drop off a load of uh, PVC fence. We're just uh, over here wrapping up a project, uh, one of our projects in St. Pete, getting ready to put on the market for sale. So Okay. So how long have you been doing the real estate thing? Uh, in Tampa, I've been down here for about two years in Tampa doing it. Um, before that, I kind of uh, did construction work on and off for a few years before that. I used to do some stuff for um, asset management companies around the country. So... Okay. So I remember back when I was a kid, I was watching infomercials about these guys that, uh, how to make money in real estate. And you go and you put in new curtains and you put in new carpet and you mow the lawn and you add some money to it and you sell it and make money. Ta-da. And, uh, it's not that easy, is it? No, 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 <laughs> not at all. I wish it was. It's, it's, uh, it's always an adventure in some way, shape or form. There's always something that goes wrong. Uh, this house in particular, I just paid to, uh, one day I paid to do the electrical panel upgrade. Uh, all new service into the building, and then uh, about two days later, we got a storm that came through and uh, ripped the ripped the uh, power cable backward into the meter socket and shorted out all all the power in the whole oh, house. Oh wow! And uh, so I had to redo the electric panel again out of nowhere. So uh, you get all kinds of weird stuff. I had actually the funniest thing that's ever had me thus far. I had a uh, I had a bird land on a transformer while my guys were working and knocked out the power to the whole block. And uh, <laughs> So that was pretty, I was just like, you can't make this stuff up, man. I mean, you can't even be angry at the guys. I'm like, dude, why aren't you guys working? They're like, dude, the power got knocked out by a bird that hit the, they sat on, <laughs> landed on the uh, power transformer, blew up the transformer. So, so those are things that uh, experience teaches you, and it's something that's sort of inevitable. So you need to kind of plan for it by budgeting and pricing things out correctly, just in case that kind of thing Absolutely. does happen, right? Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of this... Uh, a lot of the struggle a lot of people have is getting over the idea of, of, of emotion. You can't have emotion in, in this business towards the house. It's a house, and your job is to come in and do the right number, uh, right amount of dollar-wise rehab for the property to match the market specifications. You can't come in and throw, uh, you know, gold-plated handles on the doors and and marble floors everywhere in a neighborhood that's only selling for two hundred thousand dollars. You have to put in a consistent uh, consistent to the market. So. Right, and you need to be aware of the market and all that. What what kind of advice might you give for someone that's just getting into it? Just getting into rehabbing. Well, do your numbers before you uh, before you swing a hammer, before you write a check uh, of any substantial amount of money. You got to do your numbers. You want to take your time and get your numbers laid out. You want to have. I can't tell you how much preparation goes into renovating a home before we buy it. Uh, we do inspections, we do scope of works, uh, we, we have a, a construction estimator that gives us a construction estimation cost on these deals. Um, so there's a lot of due diligence that goes into our clothes. I think that's the number one thing that's not taught by people is that there's, that there's a need for you to make sure that you're actually doing your proper due diligence on the property and um, making sure you have what you need in place. So to, to learn that kind of stuff, um, would you suggest like being a part of one of these like RIA groups or whatever, so you can kind of get around colleagues and, and ask them? I'm not good with numbers. <laughs> so, strong idea to be with one of them. Get with the, go with the group of people that you know and trust. I tell everybody, uh, you know, go find a local RIA group and, uh, you know, not just go to the RIA group, but go hang out at the RIA group and go to the RIA group and find out who the top of the line is for your voice is a little bit muffled. I think you might have your finger over your on your phone or something. Your voice was a little muffled. 
Oh, that's annoying. Oh, there you go. Goodness. It's just technology these days. This is the way it works, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Is that, is that any better at all? Yep. Much better. Much better? Okay, good. Absolutely. Sometimes you might put your finger over the top of something or whatever. I don't know. But it sounds good now. Good, good. Perfect. So walk out to my car because I got bumped again by this thing and see if I can switch this to Bluetooth. Because so I can still hear you this time. Okay, perfect. I can hear you too. And you sound better outside for some reason. Well, they circumvented my block on phone calls inbound. So I'm going to switch it to my Bluetooth in my car. Okay, well, we're not going to, I don't do these too long. So it, it's not a big deal if, uh, as long as we can get through it. But I like to keep them kind of short because people, uh, you know, they have lives and they have time. I didn't have any of these problems. It worked really well. <laughs> oh, there's always something that happens with this technology thing. I'm kind of fascinated that we uh, that airplanes use technology. Scary, huh? Still there? I can hear you. Okay. Yes, we were on. We were doing a Facebook Live. This one, I'm doing it on a peer. And what happens with this, just so you know, is I capture the screen, then I put it up to YouTube, and then I take that YouTube video and I propagate it out on social media, and uh, that's how I get the traffic. It isn't uh, live traffic right now. It's uh, intentionally driven traffic. So when we're done with this, I'll share it with you on Facebook, and then if you could share it with sure. your network, and that's the whole synergy concept of Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. So have you ever done any, uh, like, investing outside the United States? Outside of the United States? Uh, I have not uh, bought anything outside the United States, but um, the numbers are still the same. That's one of the struggles I have trying to get across to people is that uh, whether you're buying a house locally here in Tampa's market or in Minnesota or wherever, the numbers don't remain the same. You're just looking for the you're looking for the spread, and you're looking for buying the asset at a discount. And so the formulas that work here are going to work pretty much anywhere else. It doesn't really matter where you're at buying the properties. Um, as long as you're buying them at the right price tag. You make money when you buy. You don't make money you know, any other way. You're making money when you buy the properties. So you got to get them at a discount uh, at the price that you want. So, I just heard some horror stories of people actually buying properties in like some third world country, and then they go to move in, and they find out somebody already moved in. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, that, there's there's actually a, a court just reversed a, a a purchase of a condominium in in uh, one of the beach areas down here. Uh, they the attorney that sold the property, um, the judge ruled that he was misleading the buyers to buy it because there was a bunch of liens that were hiding underneath the property um, on title, and they didn't know that uh, there was there was liens against the property that were not disclosed properly. And so uh, the judge the judge actually reversed the, the sale, and it was like almost a half million dollar condo. Um, you got to be really careful. Uh, I always recommend, you know, make sure that you, first of all, everybody thinks that auctions are a good way to buy houses and they can be. Um, but you also have to understand that those guys that are buying at auctions are, they have an entire business model. They have people that are working full time to, right. to do preliminary title work and special tools. So it's not, if you go buy a property at auction, it's not as simple as buying it at an auction and knowing that you have clear title, especially if there's an HOA involved. Uh, the only thing worse than the government is, I always say, is the HOAs, because the HOAs can take away your house faster than the government can. What does or HOA mortgage. stand for? Uh, housing HOA. It's like a, it's a, an association. I don't know what they technically stand for. HOA is... H Homeowners Association, maybe? Homeowners Association. There you go. That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. Just so, look it up. Okay, that's good to know, too, because I'm sure that there is, with every style of investing, there's probably a certain technique or strategy or formula for it. Yeah, um, absolutely. The guy that I'm working with in Costa Rica, he's been there for like 12, 13 years, so it's established. It's got He knows the rules and regulations down there, so that's kind of a good thing. Yeah, there, there's a lot of different ways that you can be in, in investing in real estate. Um, you know, it's kind of... It's a question of what are you looking to do? Uh, buy, fix, and flip is one strategy. It's not the best strategy for a long-term thing, but it is a strategy. But uh, that's not. It's definitely not the uh, only way to be investing in real estate. It's certainly not um, the most stable way to be investing in real what estate. A, You're ideally looking for cash flow, not 
not. Uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, speaking of cash flow? What are your thoughts on the Airbnb concept of buying and then Airbnb in it out and being a hotel? Yeah, Airbnb is. I've known people that are very successful with it down here in Florida. It's a little bit tougher because um, they uh, the neighbors on the beaches are very uh, adamant that they don't like having uh, people that are involved in Airbnb right. uh, because uh, there was a few individuals that uh, back when the um, market had crashed, they picked up some really nice houses in some high-end neighborhoods and uh, they turned them into, into party pads. And so the dude that's uh, got a $3 million mansion is hanging out next to some kids that paid a thousand dollars for the weekend to just come tear up his uh, neighbor's house next door <laughs> and uh, stay up till all hours in the morning drinking and partying. And so uh, they, they really kind of, um, have uh, put a put a damper on being able to do Airbnb down Airbnb down here in Florida, but uh, you know there's still opportunities. I I was just uh, speaking at Global last night in the meeting, and um, I was at, it and she uh, was telling me how she's uh, one of the like uh, premier or platinum like very high uh, high level uh, Airbnb host up in uh, Tennessee, Nashville. Um, so there's a lot of money to be made in that in that uh, in that uh, line of Real estate yeah, I think just like anything, you got to look at it and, and stay with, I mean, that's kind of crazy to be renting it out for super cheap to a bunch of alcoholics. That's kind of stupid, but the guy's probably just looking for a quick uh, quick fix or whatever. Use your yeah. head, folks, I yeah, suppose. Yep. There, okay. there, there, you just, there's money everywhere to be made in this industry. It's just a matter of you deciding how fast you want it and um, what kind of taxes you want to pay? And, and you do deals outside of Florida, right? You do it in other states and things. Yeah, we do deals in uh, Washington D.C., Baltimore, um, and uh, throughout the state of Florida. So. And Minnesota. I have not ventured to Minnesota. Minnesota is a huh. little bit more. The, um, the lending laws are a little more strict up there. So uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the guys that are lending hard money down here. There's a lot of a lot of financing. Uh, available to you down here. It seems like uh, almost every other person you meet in Tampa's market is a is a hard money lender, uh, Got it. meaning that they're lending strictly based on the asset spread. So they know that you're buying the asset at the loan up price tag, but their risk is pretty low mm-hmm. covered. So okay. they're not qualifying you based on credit scores and such like that. So um, Minnesota, I haven't really ventured into it too much because it's just uh, um, the lenders aren't there right now. And uh, in order to be able to do the deals, you really want to have the capital available to you to loan. Got it. Happens, so. So um, I don't like to do these too long, but if you want to uh, let us know how to get a hold of you so that if someone in Minnesota wants to maybe do something in the places that you work, uh, maybe do some deals that way. So go ahead and let us know how to get a hold of you. Yeah. Um, if you want to get a hold of me, my email address is David at Vasado, right there on my shirt, dot com. It's uh, V-E-S-A-D-O dot com. Uh, my phone number for my office is 813 813- Five three 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 one one one, and uh, we're online at Vasado dot com. So we do uh, lots of stuff on Facebook ourselves, and uh, there's lots of lots of information for me uh, from the real estate and uh, investment and business ownership on my personal page. Okay, so, uh, feel free to follow me there. Well, perfect. I will uh, put the Vasado links into this uh, video as I put it out and propagate it, and I will then connect, of course, on Facebook. And if you'll uh, share it also, and we'll get some stuff going here. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, David. Go back to work. Good hanging out with you, Brad. <laughs> Peace. Take it easy.